Good morning my beautiful brothers and sisters in Yeshua. Today is Sunday the 1st of October 2023. It is 11.16am here in Australia. I hope you're all doing very well. I hope you're blessed. Um, today's video brothers and sisters I'm going to try and make in parts and I want to talk about two incredibly high watch dates and not just for grass minute straw watch dates but um, we have a lot of evidence and um, this is kind of piggybacking off the video I did not yesterday the day before where I revealed to you and showed to you via scriptures and via um, you know historical evidence that the feast that Jesus attended to in John 10 the feast of dedication is actually the dedication of the tabernacles so in other words it's actually the feast of the tabernacles and it's really in winter and that is highly significant brothers and sisters and we also found out that the feast of Purim and the feast of Hanukkah are actually false feasts and they're almost like what you want to say cover up feasts because uh, you know the Jewish people um, you know the Pharisees and the Sadducees and stuff they they try to hide these things from us brothers and sisters because they know they're not entering into the kingdom of heaven and therefore they're trying to shut all of us out as well but father is good and the time is now the books have been open and the knowledge is increasing and by God's good grace and his mercy he's allowing us to see these things so um, and if you haven't seen that video the previous one to this one please go and watch it it's very interesting it talks about the very high poss possibility of the COP COP 28 summit that's happening um, on December it goes from November the 30th to December the 12th and that is right in the middle of the so-called Hanukkah and right in the midst of the week or the midst of the candlesticks as Yeshua Jesus Christ said in, in um, the church of Ephesus uh, Ephesian, Ephesus, Ephesus, sorry, <laughs> uh, that he is the candle, he, he stands in the midst of the seven candlesticks, okay, so, um, so basically this video is piggyback, piggybacking off of that video, the previous video, and I'm going to make it in two parts, hopefully, um, maybe not if I can get through all of this in a decent amount of time, rather than making it too long, but with that being said, I preface this video talking about the incredible two up and coming high, very, very high watch dates that are not only biblically uh, backed and historical evidence backed, but, um, you know, they're still in the window of the season of 2023, um, which I truly believe with all my heart, soul and mind that the Father has ordained as the acceptable year of the Lord okay so i'm going to jump straight in and those two high watch dates from the get-go are the up and coming uh solar eclipse of october 14th 15th and um and then we're talking about december in the area of december 12th to december 27th and to me that seems very much like father that he would leave it to the very last moment so that no soul would perish and everybody had the opportunity to hear the message of the gospel and all of that wonderful stuff. So with that being prefaced, let's get into this video. Um, I'm still continuing my search for what are your ordained days, Father God? You said that these days that you chose them, they're not our feasts. They're your, your feasts, they're your appointed times and I am desperately with all my heart, soul and mind trying to find this so that I can honour you in the right way. So I found, um, well, Father laid on my heart about um, a beeve and I've done many studies about a beeve before and um, I don't know why it never occurred to me to go back there and have a look there, but all in God's timing. And so what a beeve is, is it can be spelled A-B-I-B -I -B or A-V-I-V, -I -V, okay? It can be a beeve or a beeve. And um, what that is, is actually the star that we have in the constellation, as we call Virgo, 
um, it is the star in her hand where this solar eclipse is going to be um, on the 14th of October and that bright star there which is called Spica now the powers that be changed um, it to be called Spica I don't know in what time period or whatnot but it used to be called a beeb or a beeb okay and that is how the um, the Israelites would know when to keep um, the Passover or the first month and so that makes it incredibly special because we have a biblical scriptural starting point because if we can know when the first month is then everything else will fall into place will it not so with that being said I typed in a beeb into the Bible and we came back with four results and they all pretty much say the same thing okay observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord thy God for in the month Abib the Lord thy God brought thee forth out of Egypt by night they shall therefore sacrifice a Passover unto the Lord thy God of the flock of the herd in the place where the Lord shall choose to place his name there okay and you shall eat no leavened bread with it seven days you shall eat unleavened bread therewith even the bread of affliction for though came uh, forth out of the land of Egypt in haste, and though mayest remember the day when you came forth out of the land of Egypt all the days of your life. So this is like Father's three mandated feasts. These are to be remembered forever. It wasn't just for you know the Israelites or the Jews or whatever. This is for all people. All of God's children are to remember these days. Their days of remembrance and their foreshadowing um, events to come okay and so this is how studious people all the way back in you know Moses's day and all those kind of things when Moses told about the prophecies of the Messiah um, the people who weren't didn't have a cold heart or a stiff neck the fathers would give them eyes to see and ears to hear and this is why at the time of Christ when he was revealed at the on the 10th day of Nisan or the first month when he came riding in on a donkey this is why people were already there brothers and sisters this is why they had robes and they had palms in their hands and laid it down before the king this was the triumphal entry of the king and this these people would have known to be at Jerusalem that day every single year and as I did videos previously I told you what the Jews did with the 10th day of the first month instead of um, because back in the Exodus day that was the day they took in the lamb okay and they um, inspected it and then they would hold it um, you know in their households until the 14th day of the evening where they'd sacrifice it but um, there's this thing called um, Sabbath Hag Haggadol and basically what the Jews did is they they assumed that this wasn't this was only a command for that exodus and and it was only a once off thing and so basically forevermore they decided to bring the 10th of the first the 10th day of the first month back to the sabbath previous to the passover so they're changing the days for their own traditions and therefore that's why they missed the messiah and they're about to miss the Messiah again because of their traditions and their confusion, what they've done with the calendar, everything, brothers and sisters. The, um, you know, nowhere in the word of God it says to look for the slither of the moon to bring in the first day of the month, okay? That is straight from the Talmud and from Babylon. And um, they have the whole Christian world pretty much looking at that as well as as to bring in the first day of the month. And um, it's incredibly, you know, and then they talk about the day starting at evening. And that is not true. The day starts at the dawn when the light, you know, Yeshua Jesus Christ said himself, are there not 12 hours in the day? The day is for the children of light, the children of God. And the night is for the, the enemy and their children. 
okay and we can prove this via um, when Christ resurrected from the grave um, it says and as as the day was dawning nearing the end of the Sabbath okay uh, and that's when Christ uh, resurrected early on the Sunday morning so you can see that the day the new day from Sabbath to the first day of the week started at the dawn at the first glimmer of light right the twinkling of an eye as we call it when the the sun comes above the horizon and when it goes below the horizon that's a very split second where they call the twinkling of an eye and this is where we get the Jewish idiom from and um, and so that's that now getting back to this this is extremely important brothers and sisters because um, I'm going to try and be as concise and as clear and as non-confusing as I possibly can be. But um, again, I know I've talked about this in many videos, but it's so important that you understand this. That when we read, and we'll go there now quickly, um, so that we can read this together. We're going to go to Exodus... 11 first so we'll just back up a little bit more and so here we have um, you know the Lord said to Moses I'm going to bring one more plague upon Pharaoh and then he's going to let your people go okay and amazingly he said now speak to the ears of the people let every man borrow of his neighbor every woman of her neighbor jewels and silver and um, and jewels of gold and you know, there is another scripture that talks about that too, that all of the gold and silver of the rich elite, the evil wicked people is being stored up for us in the kingdom of heaven, brothers and sisters. Um, and this will be given. This is your true, you know, what Trump and, you know, his Q movement and this quantum computer and saying that we're all going to get this unlimited amount of wealth every month and there's going to be med beds and everything like this. They're literally trying to copy and mock what father has in store for us but in in reality the the false king that everybody's dying to have um, a lot of the evangelical Christians are dying to have Trump as their king you know father will give them their king and um, for a very small period of time it will appear that um, you know that they're going to receive all this stuff but they're going to have to do it under the guise of receiving the m-a-r-k okay you're not going to get nothing for free you will have to take that um you know m-a-r-k of the beast and that's where you'll get your so-called allowance and all this other stuff that's promised so so here you can see this is where the original idea of this was and we can read in the scriptures too that that's waiting for us. An inheritance is waiting for us in heaven. Of things our mind cannot even comprehend, brothers and sisters. The goodness and the glory of God for what's in store for us cannot even be comprehended. Um, so, moreover, the man Moses was very great in the land of Egypt, in the sight of Pharaoh's servants and in the sight of the people. And... And said to Moses, thus said the Lord, about midnight I will go out into the midst of Egypt. And all the firstborn in the land of Egypt shall die, from the firstborn of the Pharaoh that sitteth upon the throne, even to the firstborn of the main maid servant, and that is behind the mill. <laughs> That's interesting, behind the mill. Remember, there shall be two grinding at the mill, one shall be taken, one shall be left. And all the firstborns of the beast of beasts <laughs> yeah. and there shall be a great cry like the midnight cry throughout all the land of Egypt such as there was none like it nor there shall be any more there's going to be a time of trouble none like it nor will be any more this is amazing but against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog dog move his tongue against the man or beast that ye may know how that the Lord doeth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel and all the servants shall come down unto me and bow themselves unto me saying get thee out and all the people that follow thee and after that I will go out 
and he went out from Pharaoh in a great anger. And the Lord said to Moses, Pharaoh shall not hearken unto you that my wonders may be multiplied in the land of Egypt. And Moses and Aaron did all these wonders before Pharaoh and the Lord hardened Pharaoh's heart so that he would not let the children of Israel go out of the land. Okay, so we have this instance here where, um, you know, the last plague that just happened, which was plague nine, the three days of darkness. We can read about that in Exodus 10. Um, Pharaoh said, get out of my face, Moses. I don't want to ever see you again or I'm going to kill you. Right. Moses is like, yep, no worries. I'm out. And so f the Lord father said to Moses to just to Moses himself, he said, I'm going to bring one more plague on to, my, on to Pharaoh. And that's going to be the death of the firstborns, right? But Moses didn't relay this information to Pharaoh. So Pharaoh is sitting there getting more pride of heart, getting more, um, you know, uh, more angry and probably in a way thinking, oh, this is peace and safety. There's no more plagues. There's no more frogs jumping. There's no more darkness. There's no more bloods, rivers of blood, right? And then we go to Exodus 11. And there's like a two-week period, brothers and sisters, where Pharaoh um, doesn't see Moses or Aaron. And this is the beginning of that two-week period here. In Exodus 12, And the Lord spoke unto Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, This month shall be unto you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Okay, and then he gives the instructions for the Passover. On the tenth day, take the lamb. And then on the 14th day at evening, you shall kill it and take the blood um, and put it on the two lampposts, okay, signifying that we need to be covered in the blood of Yeshua Jesus Christ, okay, and then it goes on with that. But what, I'm, what I read that to you for was this part here. This, this month shall be to you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year to you. Okay, so this is incredibly important because what Father did was flip the calendar. So the um, what was originally the first month now got flipped with the seventh month. And the seventh month now became the, um, the first month. Okay, and Father did this because it's his glory to conceal the matter. And he knew this would be concealed until the time of the end when the books were opened and the knowledge was increased and we would find out this stuff via the teachings of the Holy Spirit who teaches everything in truth. So when we go back to this and we read this again about Abib, this makes much more sense, okay? Observe the month of Abib and keep the Passover unto the Lord in the month of Abib the month that God brought you out of Egypt by night. So this month, Abib, was originally, it was the seventh month, but Father flipped it, Abib, and changed it to the first month because the commandment was, all right, this is going to be the beginning of months for you, the beginning of years. And so um, Father did this to confuse the enemy and to give... The prophecies of the Messiah, a bit of a head start, basically, because he knew that the Jewish people, you know, the Israelites that uh, fell away and went into pagan worships and Babylonian traditions and still to this day, um, they hold to that. Um, so this is why Father did this. He concealed the matter and he flipped the calendar. So like I said, what was originally month seven at the time of the Passover, at the beginning of that, the first day of the first month, it was originally the first day of the seventh month, he said to Moses and Aaron, this is going to be the first day of the month for you, the first day of years. Okay? So that makes it incredibly amazing because of the fact that Abib is like what I said before, was, it is now called Spiker. 
So we can know this, brothers and sisters. We can investigate this and we can know this 100% because one, we have the scriptural evidence right here from the word of God that this is going to be, this is the uh, month one, okay? Month one, day one of the year. And it is, um, you are to know this by looking at one of the brightest stars in the sky that you'd never needed a telescope for or binoculars. Everybody back in Moses's day and in our day, we can go outside and we can see the star um, that is called Spica to this day. But in the ancient times, it was called Abib. Okay, and it is very important because it's a command from God. You are to, you know observe the month keep keep this month very special so we see here the jews right the jews is a prime example right here brothers and sisters this is their um aviv see they they go purely on the barley they're going on what is on the earth okay rather father said what is on the heavens you know many people will say oh the jews they go by the barley right when the barley is ripened where does it say that it says that not once in the Bible, just like, oh, we go by the slither of the moon to say for the first month. Where is that in the Bible? It is nowhere to be found. This is why we are to know the scriptures and have them written on our heart, right? So that um, we can test everything by the Holy Spirit who resides within us to teach us all things in truth. So the Jews are looking to earthly things, man-made things, and they're looking to the barley and they're calling it by two Babylonian things. One is the um, the slither of the moon, which is nowhere written in the word of God. And two, they're looking at the, um, the barley. Okay, and they're calling that uh, the first day of the first month or what they call Nisan, right? And it says here, last updated... The 22nd of the 4th or April 2023, it says, Note, the new moon was sighted in the evening of April 21st, uh, 2023, as expected in Jerusalem. Expected because they've got a fixed calendar. And the barley was now in Aviv. See, they're going by the barley. Okay, and that's, there's nowhere in the scriptures, brothers and sisters, that we've got to go by the barley. Um, because the word Aviv, which they're using for barley, is nothing to do with that. It's to do with the stars in the heaven. Okay, this is, uh, Father declares his glory from the heavens, right? And he conceals the matter. And it's our job to search this out. So, they've got here the Aviv is Aviv barley plus a new moon equals a Hebrew new year. Like, <laughs> you know, this is nowhere written in scripture. So, like I've I copied and pasted, um, Abib or Aviv is also the same star as Spica, which is the ear of grain in the constellation, the Virgo, the Virgin, the Woman. Okay, again, you know, you shall keep the Feast of Unleavened Bread in the time appointed of the month of Aviv. So this is exciting because we're seeing the time appointed and we don't have to go by man's calendar, brothers and sisters. We can now go by uh, via the heavens. Okay, and um, which cannot be changed. Um, I mean, people on Stellarium, on a man-made computer program can change it. But effectively what your eyes see when you step outside at night time that can't be changed okay the heavens declare father's glory so here we see um when they wrote um you know when they wrote that their first day of the new year uh first of nissan was we can see here in stellarium that it was at the lamb okay that it was at the lamb and this is not Aviv. This is not Spica. This is Aries. But it's interesting to note that the Jews still, because they're still waiting for the Messiah, right? So they're still going by the old system, which was, um, you know, originally the first month, the first day of the first month, 
was the ram or the lamb. And that was, the father had it at like that. So it was a future, it was pointing to a future sacrifice of the perfect lamb. Okay, the lamb of God, Yeshua Jesus Christ, which would give us the perfect atoning sacrifice once and for all. But the Jews, they're so stiff-necked that they still hold this, okay, in April. In April the 21st, um, they, they declared this as their first day of their first month. Okay, and Father didn't say that. He said, um, observe a beeb. Um, that is the month that I, the Lord thy God, took you out of Egypt. And remember it forever. This is not a beeb or spiker. This is what it originally was prior to the Passover. So they're totally, they're not even listening to Moses, uh, Moses's commandment, which he said from the Father, right? They, st they took that into no account. And it is the same it is also the same too when, um, remember um, Lazarus and the rich man, when they both, Lazarus was in Abraham's bosom and the rich man was in hell and he, and he cried out and he said, oh, Abraham, please just give us, I mean, yeah, Abraham, please just um, give me, uh, wet the end of your finger so that I may have one drop, you know, so to um, cool my tongue, right? And Abraham said, you know, there's a giant chasm between you and me. You can't go there and I can't come, you know, and you can't come here, vice versa. And um, and then the rich man called out from hell, basically, and said, oh, well, then please uh, send Lazarus back to my five brothers. Because if they see, you know, that a dead man's been resurrected, that um you know they'll they'll repent basically and they'll know the truth and then abraham said um it wouldn't matter because they they um you know they don't even listen to moses they don't even listen to abraham they don't even listen to any of the prophets of god so what would it matter even if a dead man came back they wouldn't listen to him and this this was to point the fact to the messiah the messiah was going to be risen by the hand of his father and nobody, you know, the majority of people weren't still going to listen to him when the most miraculous thing in the entire world had ever happened. Um, still nobody, well, obviously people did because that's why we know this knowledge to this day. Um, but you know what I'm saying? The Jews are so stiff-necked, they're so full of their traditions, they took everything from Babylon and that's what they're going to do and this is why... There needs to be absolutely a deliverance and salvation of God's children. And it is going to be the rapture. The whole rapture will be. Um, I know this is such a contention. Oh, there is no rapture. There's no pre-tribulation rapture. Rah, rah, rah. There absolutely is. Salvation is all over the word of God. And um, there has to be that because that that is the very key thing. This is the sign of the Son of Man in heaven. It will be the rapture. It will be the deliverance, the harpazo, the sparing, the escape. Okay, we promise these things. It's not just us wishful thinking. It's wonderful. What a blessing this is. And it has to happen to provoke the jealousies of God's people, the Israelites. Because they are so stiff-necked. They are off whoring with foreign gods and to their stiff-necked traditions that it has to ha be something so significant to prove that they missed the Messiah not once on his triumphal entry because they were ignorant to the words of the Father, but twice because they didn't receive Yeshua Jesus Christ as their Messiah and they could have been saved just by believing in him. And so it's going to be a hard lesson to learn and this is why it's called Jacob's Trouble, the time of Jacob's Trouble. Because Jacob's name was turned to Israel. And therefore it is the time of Israel's trouble. It's really to sort them out, brothers and sisters. So, getting back to this. As you can see here, on the 21st of the 4th, when they're calling their first day of Nisan, which isn't even the day that, um, you know, the Sanhedrin, whatever it is, called Passover. 
because I believe they call Passover. We'll have a quick look. I think they called on on the um, on the fifth of April. Okay. They called it on the fifth of April Passover. So these people here have got um, they're calling because of the barley was ripened. This is when they're saying that this is the first day of Nisan. They're saying from 14 days from this date here shall be um, Passover. Okay. And um, which, which would land on the full moon. Um, yeah, the full. Oh, well, that's interesting because it will land on the full moon on May the... Um, May the 5th okay and that was uh, when they had that blood moon when Charles was coronated on that blood moon so that's very interesting okay now I however through my study and stuff like that I believe that the full moon is the first day of the month because um, again we have no actual um command that we use the moon for the first day of the month but in saying that we have a lot of um things where it says at the new moon okay and i don't believe the new moon is that slither i believe it is the full abundant moon and um because we have that um that prophecy in psalms i believe it is or proverbs proverbs 7 where it said the man has gone on a long journey and he's took a bag of money with him and he's going to return on a full moon. Okay, it says in some translations on a new moon, but in a lot of translations it says he's going to return on a full moon. So if that's the case, um, on my, the way I look at it, the way the Father has shown me, I would have called the 5th of May on that blood moon when Charles was coronated, I would have called that the first day of the first month. Okay, but, um, and that even itself is wrong too, because of what I'm trying to show you here, that we're going too soon. It, we need to flip what Father did at the time of the Exodus. He flipped the calendar, as you can see. So, where is Spiker? And where will, um, where is a beep? And where can we know that it is true, um, truly the first day of the first month via what Father has said in the scriptures? You know, you shall keep the feast of unleavened bread, eat it for seven days as I commanded thee in the time appointed of the month of Aviv. Okay, remember he swapped them. Originally it was this, originally, before Exodus 12, chapter, uh, verse 1, but then he flipped it to this. Okay, after Exodus, this will be the beginning of months for you, the beginning of years in Exodus 12. It is the Virgin, okay, the constellation Virgo, as we call it. Okay, this here, as you can see here in her hand, what she's holding that is spiker that is a beeb that is truly what father's talking about he says you will observe a beef the month that you know the day that i took you out of egypt at, by night you'll observe this forever and remember it so what's incredibly exciting brothers and sisters is the moon and the sun is in a beep on the 14th of October when we're going to have this solar eclipse okay and when you have a look from the 21st of April 2023 to the 14th of October 2023 it indeed gives you 177 days so it is the mirror the calendar is flipped okay so in essence brothers and sisters what I'm trying to tell you here is what you're looking at here on October the 14th is truly, truly Passover. Okay? And the reason I say it's Passover is because 
we have to be logical. Remember, everything has been flipped, reversed, put upside down, made black and white by the enemy, right? Like I said, he, he calls the evening the beginning of the new day. Right? They start their new days at evening, which is very nonsensical. And in the scriptures, it says that the day begins at dawn. Okay? They start their new month on a completely dark moon with a slither, where it's nowhere in the scriptures. But when you think about it, when Father first created the sun and the moon, he said, I made two great lights. He didn't make the sun and a slither of the moon. He made a full moon, a full sun, and therefore that was the beginning of their, that was their newness, right? The, the moon was new. It was perfectly newly made and it was full, abundant. So therefore, they're getting, they're throwing us off, brothers and sisters. This is their tactics. They want to profane the truth in all aspects of everything that we could possibly even think of, even to the fact of the month. Okay, and so here we are. Here we are now in, you know, and this is why these signs were so important in this particular uh, constellation if you want to call it okay and this is um, uh, maybe this is the reason why this constellation has been in so many people's around the world in their um, you know in their thoughts at the moment because father is trying to say hey this is actually the beginning of months for you okay this is actually when my um, you know and and not only that we can look at it two ways too. But for, I, I just want to stick on the fact that this could possibly be Passover, okay? And what makes it so significant is um, the fact that the sun and the moon is in the constellation of which is known as the Virgin, okay? And um, there could be another possibility that the dark... Well, the reason also I believe that the 15th day is the dark moon rather than the full moon like the Jews do it is because the 15th day or the 14th day at evening, right? That is when Christ was crucified. And we can read, we can read and I have it down here. Um... Okay, it's a dark, concealed moon, fully dark, concealed moon. Hence, why are we having a solar eclipse? We can read down here. In Matthew 27, 45. Now from the sixth hour, there was darkness all over the land unto the ninth hour. Mark 15, 33. And when the sixth hour had come, there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. So this is from our 12 o'clock lunch, lunchtime to 3 p.m. Okay. But in Luke 23, 44, it says, and there was about six, and it was about the sixth hour, and there was darkness over all the earth until the ninth hour. Okay, brothers and sisters, all the earth. I think a lot of people have missed that. They just think this was a, a thing that happened in Jerusalem. Okay, remember... Um, when I think in April I did a video showing you that the emperor, the Chinese emperor, he has it still to this day written down in his in his um, tablets of stone. Okay, they marked it that this that this particular day there was a solar eclipse and a lunar eclipse at the same time. And it was recorded down in history, the History Channel and all that. They've covered it and everything like this. And it literally says three days later, which would have been on the 17th day, the Resurrection Day. It said, and this is in China, brothers and sisters. This is all the way over the opposite side. And it says on the 17th day that they saw a rainbow around the sun, like complete circle of rainbow around the sun. Exactly how it describes Yeshua Jesus Christ. In the kingdom of heaven and it describes his father too that his father sits on a throne with a rainbow roundabout okay then it goes on a little while i think in revelation 14 
it talks about this great um this great angel who has the face like the sun and a rainbow over his head okay that's Yeshua Jesus Christ the father like sun right but this I need you to notice okay over all the earth for three hours it was a solar eclipse brothers and sisters it was on the time of the solar eclipse this is also proven to be at the time of um, Jonah and at Nineveh there's a historical account that there was a solar eclipse then and this is what Yeshua is referring to he said I'm going to give you no other sign except for the sign of Jonah okay um, so and this this eclipse is proving to be incredibly special and now that we can add on to the fact brothers and sisters that um, you know that this could very well be and I'm not just grasping at straws here am I I've just shown you and proven to you via the Word of God that he commanded us to observe a beep which is spiker so when what better way that when the moon and the sun and a solar eclipse, the darkening, okay, and then let's have a look to verify that again in Matthew 24. Okay, um, immediately after the tribulations of those days, What's the tribulation? It's the beginning of sorrows, okay? The rum rumors of wars, the kingdom against kingdom and famine and pestilence. We've had all those things, brothers and sisters. Okay, immediately after the tribulation of those days, what's going to happen? The sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. What is that? That's the solar eclipse because the sun and the moon rise and set together when the dark is and when the moon is um, completely dark okay the sun is going to be darkened and the moon won't give her light that's a solar eclipse brothers and sisters okay and then the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken what are the powers of the heaven this is alerting us to the fact that, um, you know, at that time, Michael's going to stand up. You know, in Daniel 12, at that time, Michael shall stand up, the defender of our people, the fighter for our people. And in Revelation 12, it says there shall be a war in heaven and Michael shall stand up and fight against the dragon. Okay, that is the powers of heaven that are going to be shaken. And what happens? Michael's going to prevail. And he's going to cast Satan down to this earth. Okay. And then it says. And then shall appear the sign of the son of man in heaven. And all the tribes are going to mourn. What's the sign of the son of man in heaven? When the. When. Um, you know the heavens are shaken. And Michael stands up. We can read again. Via the Bible. In Daniel 12. At that time, Michael shall stand up. That's like Revelation 12. He's going to stand up and have that war in heaven and cast Satan out. The great prince which standeth for the children of thy people. Um, and there shall be a time of trouble, such as was never since there was a nation. Okay, so at the time Michael stands up and he has to fight in heaven, that's when the time of trouble starts. The time of Jacob's trouble, the time of Israel's trouble. And what, what, what else happens at that time? And at that time, that very same time that this all happens, boom, 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 thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book. Okay, and then it goes on to clarify it's going to be the dead in Christ first. And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake. Okay, and us who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them to meet Yeshua Jesus Christ in the air. And we're going to be forever with him. Amen. Okay, and then not only, like I always say, not only is the dead in Christ being awoken so that they can rise and meet Yeshua Jesus Christ in the air, but, but the wicked shall also be risen out of their grave, the dead wicked. And this is why they are pre-programming us to the zombie apocalypse. And this is why, 
It's a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation even to the same time. And this is why it says in Luke 21 that men's hearts will faint with fear on what is coming upon this earth. Okay. Brothers and sisters, this is imminent. This is so imminent and it's not just wishful thinking. The rapture, and it's got such a bad name for itself. As soon as you say rapture, people, oh, that's not true. That's not true. It's how can it not be true with like the rapture verifies God's great character. He's our papa, our abba, our daddy. He loves us. He, he loved us so much that he gave his one and only begotten son for us and watched him get tortured and beaten and spat on and rejected. That's how much he, the Father loves us, that he gave his one and only begotten son for us. Why do you think that um, Yeshua Jesus Christ is, you know, went before he left? He said, I'm going to go, you know, in my Father's house there are many mansions and I go to prepare a place for you so that where I am, you will be as well. Why do you think in Isaiah 26, 20, it says, Come, my people, into my chambers and shut the door. And hide thyself for a little moment until my indignation goes over path. Until my wrath goes over path on this earth. But come up into my chambers and shut the door and you'll be safe here. This is the same thing that Yeshua is talking about when he says, you know, I'm going to prepare places for you. That's the ark. That is the heavenly ark. And the heavens, okay, where, where these places are being prepared... All this, um, you know, and the heavens and earth are going to pass away. Okay, because the new Jerusalem is going to be coming down and it's going to be on this new earth. So those places prepared for us are effectively temporary arcs. Okay, of protection. While Father's indignation goes over path on this earth. His wrath goes over path. So I'm going to leave it at that one for part one because, um, and, you know, here's just, a, um, you know, I typed in solar eclipse at the time of Christ and the most recent articles was how to photograph the ring of fire on the solar eclipse of October 14th. <laughs> I saw this information on October the 14th. But you can look at it for yourself. And here, we, you know, we go to, um, you know, and I know people will be like, oh, NASA, what are you looking at them for? But I'm just showing you from a worldly point of view um, that they've got, they can track all the eclipses and the, um, you know, the lunar eclipses, the solar eclipses and everything like that. They can track and they have been able to track. And we can see that we read here on March 19th in the year 33, there was a solar eclipse and they and they themselves brothers and sisters this is nasa they themselves have two instances where they've written crucifixion of christ question mark crucifixion of christ question mark okay and um you know there's lots of evidence brothers and sisters there's lots of evidence to suggest that there was a, a solar eclipse see the father's not the author of confusion right he will use his own elements just as i believe and i think a lot of people are well aware of what we like to call planet x or nibiru or whatever that is that is hovering outside of the firmament probably okay and because we can see in revelations chapter 8 that something burning like fire gets cast down from heaven down to this earth okay and it's gonna make all the seas blood and the fish die and everything like that so there's something there that i think is outside of the firmament and this is why we can see it because it is like a big ice dome that's covering us um and at the at the appointed time the destroyer nibiru planet x whatever it may be what father uses um he will just like he did in the passover that he said the destroyer came you know and all the death of the firstborns will be i believe 
that um, this will happen again. He's going to use his destroyer. His elements is what I'm trying to get at. Okay. And he's going to, you know, and maybe, maybe very conveniently because in Joel 2, I want to show you something else. In Joel 2, we see two instances of, um, Okay, in Joel 2, in verse 10, we see the earth shall quake before them. That's in, um, um, you know, in, in seal 6, okay, the earth shall quake before him. Well, it's also too when Christ was crucified, okay, it's when he took his last breath, there was a giant earthquake and it ripped the veil and tore the temple veil in two, okay. And there needs to be an earthquake to uh, crack open all the graves. Okay, and the heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. Okay, the sun and the moon shall be dark. Notice there's two instances. There's one where the sun and the moon shall be darkened. Or they won't give their light. And the other one is the sun shall be black as sackcloth, And the moon shall become as blood. That's talking about a solar eclipse. And then two weeks later, a lunar eclipse. Okay. And the stars shall withdraw their shining. So we have this instant first, which could very well be on the solar eclipse on the 14th of October. And then two weeks later, we have a lunar eclipse. Granted, it's not anything. It's like a penumbral lunar eclipse. So only the very corner of the moon will be eclipsed. But... This would definitely be a time they think not when they're not expecting a blood moon or anything like that. I don't know. I don't know, brothers and sisters. I'm just throwing that out there as a possibility. Okay, because we come down here. And it says, um, I will show wonders in the heaven and in the earth, blood and fire and pillars of smoke. Now that's volcanoes and earthquakes. And the sun shall be turned into darkness, okay, black as sackcloth, and the moon into blood before the great and terrible day of the Lord comes. So remember, the rapture, the snatching away, is um, it's going to be like a, um, a quick in, imminent event, okay? It's going to be like, like it says, in the twinkling of an eye. Because you've got up here, uh, where are we? Um, you know, when you when the, when the abomination of desolation happens, okay, it says, let them that are on the housetop not come down to take anything out of his house. Now, this listen to this one. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. Okay, so there's going to come a time when the abomination of desolation happens and we're all going to be a very, very aware, very well aware of what that is, okay? So there's going to be people that are in the field and they are told, do not go back to your house to go and get your clothes. Now, why are these people in the field? We come down here. It says, um, you know, uh, but as in the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be, for in the days that were before the flood. So before the tribu the Great Tribulation, or the um, Jacob's Trouble, um, they were eating and they were drinking, they're marrying and giving in marriage. And like in the days of Not, their plant Lot, they were planting and building until the day that Noah entered the ark. Okay, until the day that we entered the ark. So it's kind of like a, I don't want to say secret rapture, but we're going to be taken. Okay, and I think this is where, where the word, um, you know, then there shall be peace and safety. Because when we're removed, there's no more of these people on YouTube and TikTok and street preachers and anything like that. We're, we're all gone. Okay, and the children, are, you know, will be removed and everything like that. It's going to be a time of peace and safety for these wicked elites, you know, these powers that be that are on this earth that are possessed by demonic spirits. It's going to be a peace. Okay. And they knew not until the flood came. 
So they didn't know. Remember, Noah went on to that ark. Seven days before the flood happened, the door was shut. He went in, the door was shut, and they knew not of anything. They were continuing to party and drink and carry on for seven more days, right? And they're probably like, yes, Noah, he's left us alone. That old man up there who built that stupid boat in the middle of nowhere, he's quiet. Yes, we can party, we can be in our debauchery and be as wicked as we want to be. Uh, without anybody telling us to repent or turn away from our sins and blah 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 and then what happened and they knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall it be with the coming of the son of man it's going to be exactly the same and then here we are um, then two shall be in the field one shall be taken one shall be left okay we have up here Neither let him which is in the field return to take his clothes. This guy here, he's the one that's left. Okay, he was just in the field. He was just one of the two people in the field. For then there shall be two in the field. One is taken, one is left. The one that's left is admonished. Do not go back and take your clothes. You need to what? Flee to the mountains. Those in Judea need to flee to... Um, you know, to um, Petra, probably, more than likely. And again, it's only going to be those Jews, or those Israelites, rather, God's children, that really know the word of God, that have the commandments of God and the testimony of Yeshua, Jesus Christ. They're going to be the ones that will know this message, and they will flee, and they will be protected from the face of the serpent. Okay, for those 1,260 days. Whereas the other ones, because remember, in Zechariah 14, let's go there quickly, there's only a remnant, brothers and sisters, a remnant of the Jews, which is probably the 144,000, right? So we go Zechariah 14. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh, and thy spoil shall be divided in the midst of thee. For I will gather... All nations against Jerusalem to battle because remember that's what we're waiting for too um, when you therefore see the armies surrounding Jerusalem um, then you know that the desolation thereof is nigh meaning the abomination of desolation is just about to happen when you see the armies surrounding Jerusalem and what's happening right now brothers and sisters that very thing and the city shall be taken and the house is rifled and the women ravished Okay, this is chaos. The instance that we're taken, brothers and sisters, the city's going to be taken over by FEMA and, you know, martial law declared. The houses are going to be rifled. People are going to bust through people's doorways and, and get down, police, rah, rah, you know, carry on. And the women ravished, you know, there's going to be rapings and murders and all sorts of horrific stuff going on. And half of the city shall go forth into captivity. They're going to be taken into captivity and being forced to take the um, the M A R K. But what does it say here? And the res and the Riju the Rizju or oh, right the remnant of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Okay, it's going to be the hundred and forty four thousand. I I would believe um, they won't be cut off from the city. Then the Lord shall go forth and fight against those nations. As he fought in the day of battle okay and then you can see this the the second coming of Christ okay and his feet shall stand in that day upon the Mount of Olives which is before Jerusalem on the east and the Mount of Olives shall cleave in the midst therefore towards the east and towards the west and there uh, shall be a great valley half the mountain shall be removed towards the north and half of it towards the south and they shall flee to the valley of the mountains. This is the valley of Armageddon, right? To the, the valley of the mountains shall they reach to Azel. Ye, ye shall flee like you fled before the earthquake in the days of Isaiah the king, uh, Isaiah, yeah, the king of Judah, and the Lord my God shall come, and all the saints with him, with thee. And it shall come to pass in that day that the light shall not be clear nor dark. Okay, um, 
So that's what I'm trying to say, brothers and sisters. As soon as the abomination of desolation is, um, that's that's the key. That's the ticket. Okay, and I truly believe when we see the um, what do you call it? Um, when we see this army surrounding Jerusalem, and it's like I know that we see that now, but there's going to be a significant time that they're really, really going to be really close. And that's going to be our sign because it, two verses down it says, when you see these things begin to come to pass, lift up your heads, look up, for your redemption draws near. So um, I'm going to leave you with that, brothers and sisters, and um, I will do another video later this afternoon talking about December. And continuing on with the winter discussion of the true uh, tabernacles um, that's in December. We don't know. This is what I want to just let you know, brothers and sisters. We don't know this thing for 110% assurity. Okay? It is our job to try and search out these hidden mysteries of Father. And, um, you know, because it was His glory to conceal a matter. And it's our glory as his servants to search out this matter. So I'm only doing what I feel led to show you and tell you and to um, encourage you with. But this could possibly be very well be the true Passover via what Father has said. You know, observe a beeb and remember this forever. And a beeb being spiker. Here we have right on the solar eclipse. And then we've got what, what it says in Matthew 24, you know, and then immediately after the tribulation of those days, it's not the great tribulation yet or Jacob's trouble, but, um, you know, then the sun shall be darkened and the moon shall not give her light. That's That screams solar eclipse. So this could all fit very well, brothers and sisters, all fit very well. And... Also, just why, just before I go to, um, if this is the first day of the first month, truly, then also, it's also the first day of the seventh month as well, as I've explained with the calendars, how they're flipped and mirrored. Therefore, not only is it the first day of Nisan, it's the first day of Tishri as well. So it could very well be um, trumpets. Or it could very well be um, the 15th day of Nisan or the 15th day of Tishri, which is tabernacles. Whatever it may be, brothers and sisters, um, it's highly significant that, you know, that we read what the scripture says, what Father's has made his appointed times and we try and follow that as much as we can. So I believe this is very significant and like I said, two weeks later after this, you have the lunar eclipse. This could fit Joel too. You know, I'm going to make the sun and moon go dark and then two weeks later I'm going to make the, the, the sun black as sackcloth and the moon into blood on the full moon. So anyway... I'll leave you with that, brothers and sisters. I'll come back again this afternoon and I will make part two on um, talking more about the tabernacles being truly in winter via the books that we've seen from Josephus and uh, what we can read in the scriptures from John 10 about the Feast of Dedication really being the Feast of the Dedication of the Tabernacles. And... Um, yeah, so I'll leave you with that. I hope this video has blessed you. I hope it's encouraged you. Um, we could see each other very soon, brothers and sisters. Oh, one more thing too. Interesting. If this solar eclipse here, okay, if this solar eclipse here, which is on like the 14th and, and um, you know, it starts on the 14th, um, 14th of October, if this is the 15th day, which I believe it is, the 14th at evening going into the 15th, which I believe it is, making a true Passover, then we go 14 days previous. What's 14 days previous? 
or hang on, sorry, 10 days previous. Um, 10 days previous from the 14th of October. What I'm saying, anyway, 14 days, 10, bleh, bleh, sorry, 10 days previous from the 14th of October will be the 4th of October. Okay, the 4th of October could truly be the first day of the first month. Because remember, we've got to keep in mind that we've got no instructions via the sun and the moon. We have to keep that in mind. I know we always want to go back to, oh, if, this, if the moon's dark or if the, the moon's full, it could be, you know, the 1st or the 15th. But there is no instruction for that. So what I'm trying to get at is it's possible that this is why this October 4th thing is happening. Okay, this emergency broadcasting thing. It could very well signify the first day of the seventh month or the first day of the um, first month. Either or. Um, but what I'm trying to say is this, you know, this could be the Day of Atonement too. <laughs> Or this could be the triumphal entry, being the 10th day, you know. Maybe 10 days before will be the 4th of October. I hope I'm not confusing you. And I, I know it does sound a bit confusing, but there's so many possibilities, brothers and sisters, because we aren't commanded to go by the sun or the moon in any way, shape or form, right? We are to... We have one instruction in the word of God that was in Exodus and Deuteronomy is to observe a beep. And this is where a beep is. So it could it could be Passover. It could be the Day of Atonement. It could be um, Tabernacles. And in either case, one of the possibilities then means that, it, that the, um, the first day could either be, um, you know, October the 4th, 10 days before, could be the 1st of Tishri. And uh, I'm sorry that that was highly confusing, but I just think it's so interesting that they're trying to do this thing on October the 4th. And October the 4th, brothers and sisters, as I've shown you in other ones, was the very end date of the Julian calendar. Okay, it was the very end date of the Julian calendar. The next day it swapped over to the Gregorian calendar. So was this the evil elite's way of trying to hide and steal those 10 days? Remember Pope Gregory, he took 10 days out of the calendar. It went from October the 4th to October the 15th. He tried to steal 10 days, so which I believe are the 10 days of all. From day one to day ten, okay, of Tishri. But then looking at this and going by what Father said, this could be the very well could be the first month. It doesn't matter. In the end, first or seventh, they're highly both of them are the mirror of each other, so they're going to be highly significant. So long story short, it's going to be important no matter which way you look at it. So just be ready, be focused, have your head and your neck lifted up, <laughs> hands in the air. No, you don't have to do that. But um, just be ready, brothers and sisters. Have those Jesus bags packed at the door. Pitch up any holes in your faith like Noah did with the ark and um, be encouraged. Be encouraged. We're definitely in the season. So I'm going to leave you with that, brothers and sisters, and... In a little while, I'll get back to making part two, talking about the December high watch date. Okay, I love you very much, and I will see you in the next video, or I'll see you in the skies. God bless you. I love you. Bye-bye.